Hello students! Welcome to the second episode of our CIP Project Walding. Before we proceed with our new lesson for today, let us try to refresh some of the basic lessons we have in English. I would like you to select the complete subject and complete predicate in the succeeding statements. Let's have the first one. The sun was shining brightly earlier. Can you guess the complete subject and the complete predicate in this statement? You are correct. The sun is the subject. Was shining brightly is the predicate. Let's have the second one. My younger brother serves in the army. What is the complete subject and the complete predicate in this statement? Awesome! My younger brother is the subject. Serves in the army is the complete predicate. Let's try another one. You don't have to wait for me. What is the subject and the predicate in this sentence? Perfect. You is the subject. Don't wait for me is the predicate. Let's have the next sentence. The pretty girl is wearing a blue dress. Excellent! The pretty girl is the subject. Is wearing a blue dress is the complete predicate. Let's try another one. A rich merchant was passing by the shoemaker. Can you guess what is the complete subject and the complete predicate in this statement? Great! The complete subject is a rich merchant. On the other hand, was passing by the shoemaker is a complete predicate. I am glad that you were able to identify the subject and the predicate in the given statements. We will have our new lesson for the day about the types of sentences according to structure. This will be a sort of refresher because we will focus more on how we are going to use conjunctions and prepositions in formulating your statements. Sentences are nice little packages of words that come together to express a complete thought. They make it easy to understand ideas and learn information. We can categorize sentences based on different criteria, and one way to categorize them is based on their structure. When we do this, we find that there are three sentence structures. Let's take a look at each one. The first one is a simple sentence. A simple sentence contains only one independent clause. An independent clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb and expresses a complete thought. Here is a sentence diagram of a simple sentence. I kick the ball. I kick the ball is an independent clause. It contains a subject, I, and the verb kicked, and it expresses a complete thought. Second one is a compound sentence. A compound sentence contains at least two independent clauses. These clauses are joined by a coordinating conjunction or a semicolon. A coordinating conjunction for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so is a word that glues words, phrases, 
or clauses together. Here is an example of a compound sentence. I kicked the ball and it hit Tom. I kicked the ball is an independent clause. It hit Tom is also an independent clause. And is a coordinating conjunction joining two independent clauses. Therefore, I kicked the ball and it hit Tom is an example of a compound sentence. A complex sentence contains a subordinate clause and an independent clause. A subordinate clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb but does not express a complete thought. Here is an example of a complex sentence. Tom cried because the ball hit him. Tom cried is an independent clause. Because the ball hit him is a dependent clause modifying the verb cried. Tom cried because the ball hit him is an example of a complex sentence. Now that we were able to identify the types of sentences according to structure, let us talk about the proper usage of conjunctions and prepositions wherein you will need them to connect your compound and complex sentences. Do you have any questions for me before we go? Let's proceed. There are many conjunctions in the English language, but some common ones include and, or, but, because, for, if, and when. Remember that a conjunction is a word that is used to connect words, phrases, and clauses. Coordinating conjunctions is used to connect items that are grammatically equal. Two words, two phrases, or two independent clauses. There are seven coordinating conjunctions in the English, and you can remember them using the mnemonic device fan voice for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Let's try to look at this example. The data was gathered through questionnaires and interviews. The coordinating conjunction and can join two words, which are questionnaires and interviews. The results were undeniably intriguing, yet ultimately inclusive. Coordinating conjunction also join different phrases. These are undeniably intriguing, ultimately inclusive. Mary Tess Casau initially planned on signing up for an electrical training course, but welding was more in demand and offered a higher salary package. So she decided to take the welding training instead. In this example, coordinating conjunction also join clauses and create relationship from it. Next one is a subordinating conjunction. Includes words like because, if, although, since, until, and while. A subordinating conjunction is used to introduce a dependent clause. Let's try to look at this example. Because I woke up late this morning, I went to school without eating breakfast. I woke up late this morning is an example of an independent clause. But the subordinating conjunction because turns it into a dependent clause. Because I woke up late this morning does not finish a complete thought. It must be joined to an independent clause to form a grammatically correct sentence. Correlative conjunction always comes in pair and it's used to join grammatically equal elements in a sentence. Common pairs include either, or, neither, nor, not only, but also, and both.
And in most cases, no comma should be used between the two elements. She was looking for a job not only to support her siblings through school, but also to fund the medical needs of her parents. The sentence is joined by a correlative conjunction, not only, but also. Let us now proceed on how we use prepositions. Prepositions are words that show the relationship between elements in a sentence. They can express relationships of the place, time, direction, and other abstract or logical connections. Prepositions are often used to describe where, when, or how something happens. Accuracy was increased by repeating the test. How accuracy was increased? By repeating the test. Let's try the next one. I fixed the light with a screwdriver. In this statement, it was questioned how I fixed the light. And it answers with a screwdriver. The meeting resumes at 10.30 a.m. This statement also answered the question when. When did the meeting resume? At 10.30 a.m. The crushing machine is located in the mechanic's lab. Where is the crushing machine located? In the mechanic's lab. Now that we know the types of sentence structure and the proper usage of conjunctions and prepositions, we will move on to our next topic, which is composing our own statement of the research problem. Statement of the problem is an intellectual stimulus that calls for an organized response in the form of scientific inquiry and should express a relationship between two or more variables. What is meant by variable? Variable is any property or characteristic of some event, object, or perhaps person that may have different values at different times, depending on the condition. Examples of variables can be gender identity, ethnicity, race, income, and education are just some. When we talk about statement of the problem, we have to bear in mind that it is divided into two parts. First, we have the general statement of the problem or the main objective, and we also have a specific statement of the problem or the specific objectives. The general or main objective of the problem provides the focus of the research, and it is expressed in terms of declarative form. On the other hand, when we say specific objective, these are statements that will address the realization of the research objective and it is expressed in terms of interrogative form. How do we create the general statement of the problem? The general problem should contain the following. First is the purpose of the study. Second is the respondents then environment, and its general address followed by a time frame and output. On the other hand, the specific problem should contain the following. First is the profile of the respondents. Next is the assessment of the independent variable. Third is the assessment of the dependent variable. Fourth is the hypothesis testing on the relationship of the variables or significance difference of the measured variables based on groups. And finally, we have the output of the study. Now that we understood the basics in formulating the statement of the problem, let us now apply our learning. So at this point, let me provide you a sample research title. Our research title is The Impact of Parental Involvement Towards the Literacy and Numeracy Skills of the Kindergarten. I will give you time to think 
which of these is our independent and dependent variable? Good job! Parental involvement is the independent variable. Literacy and numeracy is the dependent variable. Let us now formulate the statement of the problem. Let us start with the general problem. The general problem is, this research will assess the impact of parental involvement towards the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners at ABC University from the school year 2018 to 2019 as a basis for a proposed literacy and numeracy skills enhancement plan. As we can see, we have the elements of a general problem. The purpose of this study, which is will assess the impact of parental involvement towards the literacy and numeracy skills. The respondents, which is the kindergarten learners, environment, which is ABC University, the time frame, which is school year 2018-2019, and the output, which is proposed literacy and numeracy skills enhancement plan. Now that we have created the general problem, let us now move on to the formulation of the specific problem. In this case, we should state specifically it seeks answers to the following queries. As I have said earlier, the first specific problem must consist of the profile of our respondents, and for that matter, our specific problem is... What is the profile of the learners in terms of gender and age, parents' highest educational attainment, parents' occupation, and combined family monthly income? Next is let us assess the independent variable, which is parental involvement. Thus, we have the second specific problem, which is as perceived by the parent respondents what is the extent of their involvement towards the school activities of their child now we will assess the dependent variable which is literacy and numeracy skills thus we have the third specific problem which is what is the level of literacy and numeracy skills of the learners? The fourth element in the specific problem is the hypothesis testing on the relationship of the variables or significant difference of the measured variable based in groups. Thus, we have the fourth specific problem which is is there a significant relationship between the parental involvement and the literacy skills and numeracy skills of learners? And finally, we have the output of the study, which is written this way. Based on the findings of the study, what numeracy and literacy skills enhancement plan can be proposed? Now that we are all equipped in formulating our statement of the problem, it is time to assess whether we fully understood our lesson today. Let us try to figure out what general and specific problem is appropriate with a given title. Our title is Welding Skills of Shielded Metal Arc Welding or SMO Grade 12 Learners. What is the general problem for this title? This study aimed to describe the welding skills of the shielded metal arc welding or SMAO majors.
correct. The right general problem for this title is this study aimed to describe the welding skills of the shielded metal arc welding or snow measures. Next, what are the specific problems for this title? That's great! This study sought answers to the following questions. First, what is the profile of the respondents in terms of age and gender? Second, how may the students be described along their ability to follow directions, level of needed assistance, applications of safety practices, keeping with assigned tasks and attitude, and clean up and tool return? What are the implications of the study to shielded metal arc welding, SMAO? Good job, SMAO students! Now, it is your turn to make your own statement of the problem. For your assignment, create your own statement of the problem by giving the general and specific ones. Write your answer on one whole sheet of paper. I hope you had learned a lot in our episode and hoping to see you again next week. Goodbye, students!